are guys and welcome back to the channel. Hello, it's me, Bassman. Nice to see you again. And with me today is Sir Keith. Say good, hello. Good morning, everybody. Great to be out with you this morning, sir. It's quarter to 10, the tide's flooding in. We are at Lara Bridge and we are gonna get our first mullet of the year. Fingers crossed. Now you might, have, you might think I'm, I shouldn't have said that, but that's how confident I am today. Because what we've got now is a proper water levels in the plinth. I went past Tory Brook earlier, opposite Liddles and Plimpton, and the little brook has finally gone down. It's been up over the banks for weeks, and I haven't even looked at this because it's just not worth it. So yes, me and Keith are here for our first mullet of the year, and that rhymes, doesn't it? It does. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've got my Black Beauty, so I've got a brand new um, Black Rock all rounder, 12 foot, 1.25 test of Sir. So thank you, Matthew, for that, because my, uh, my barbel rod, which is exactly the same blank, was in a little bit of a worse condition, uh, stood on the handle. Oops. Anyway, so yes, welcome along. We're gonna show you how to catch the mullet today and, and the tactics and everything. So we're gonna start off here and then we're gonna get go up the top of the plim and see if there's anything about up there. So yeah, good luck and tight lines. Let's go fishing, guys. Tight lines. Look how sharp it is, you can't even go near it. Right, I'm filming now. Right, okay. Right, just getting me rusty pliers going. And I must have bought about 50 pairs of these over the years and they just rust out because they're not, they're not sea proof, are they? Right, Sir King. I have got on here, right, it's a tip for you treble hook users, a nasty, ugly, horrible treble hook, right? But how many of you guys out there use treble hooks on your mullet? And be honest in the comments. Say, yes, I do use treble hooks, or no, I use a single, sir. Right, so, so let me know in the comments, because I bet you, there's, if you're being honest with me, there's lots of hundreds of anglers that use these hooks, right? So I'm gonna turn this treble hook into a double hook, right? So I'm gonna snip one off. And what that's gonna do is, it's gonna obviously take away that third hook, and it's gonna create a mouth-friendly bait when I put the bait on. The worst thing about treble hooks, if you didn't know, right, and I know lots of people use them, they're very good at catching mullet. If you're lucky enough to catch a big mullet on this hook and it puts its mouth over this hook and it's pinned its lips, right, and you lose that fish, that's it, it's buggered, right? It cannot feed because its lips are, it can't feed, can it? <laughs> it's got a lip piercing. So that's why, we're going away from treble hooks now, the, the sort of modern mullet, ang mullet anglers. But when I'm filming, I, I'm sorry, but I like to use a double hook because I like to get results for the camera. So it's half about that, really. I do use single hooks a lot, all right? But when I'm filming, I'll put a double on, yeah? Because you want to see fish. I don't want to keep missing them, and it's, it's a lot. I'm just more confident because you've got two sides, haven't you? Yeah. So all I'm going to do, look, enough waffle, and I should have my glasses on for this, and they're, they're not very sharp, these things. Right, so I'm gonna go in as close as I can to that point to the hook at the back, right? And then just press down with the rusty pliers and that's it gone. So it's it's actually in here. So let's not leave that around. There you go. So that's just in my hand in there, look. So I am going to throw that into the ocean because it's the safest place for it. And now I have got, look, a double hook. And I can weave my, put my bread around there and make it flat so the mullet can only take it in that way. It can't, it can't take it that way because it's just unnatural the way I'm going to present the bait. So that's, a, that's tip number one for today is if you've got treble hooks, you don't need a treble hook. A, a single's fine, but a double is even better for presentation. So yeah, that's tip number one. Right, here we are. So there, so there's my nice not nice, but there's my double hook that we've just snipped off, right? So I'm gonna put the bait on now. So this is the important bit. And there's lots of ways of doing this, I get that. Right, so all I'm gonna do is pull off a piece like that. I suppose, what would that be like? It's a bit bigger than a 50p, isn't it? So it's a nice piece of bread like that. And then look, imagine you've got two halves to this. So I'm gonna stick it there. And when I push that hook in, I'm pushing it in so I can just feel it catching my finger this side. Not so I can see it, but I can just feel it. Right, and then all I do is fold it over like a pasty and start crimping like that. And this is one of the best presentations that I have found personally. 
with the double hook. And then I just roll over the ends that I've crimped there, look, so it can't come undone. And you can just see a little hook there, look, but that, I'm not worried about that. And what that does is now, look, that's a flat bait. So that, the mullet can only take it in that way. They'll come in, they'll go nom, 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 nom. No, 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 no. They'll reverse and they'll come up and they'll do this. So they're not gonna take it that way. They, they, it's, it's impossible, they can't take that. It's gonna be flat. So nine times out of 10, you're gonna hook that fish nicely in the corner of the mouth. I've never deep hook, never deep hook to mullet on a double hook. It's always been in here or here, so yeah. So that's how I'm baiting up. And just for good measure, we're gonna put the washing line on. So washing line rig is just as it sounds. So this is free offerings for the mullet. So if you're, if you're casting a long distance, for example, and you can't get any brown bait out there, well, here's your ground bait already on the line. It's that simple, guys. Mullet fishing is really easy. It's just a confidence thing. It'll only take you a couple of years to get into it to learn, which is, you know, it's not long, really, if you think about lure fishing and all that. So yes, Keith, are you ready to go and catch a mullet? Let's go to it. Let's go, guys. Thank you, Keith. Rolling? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so down here, we're just going to cast. You just sort of point down there, Keith. So I'm already lowered my line, look, so I don't make a big splash. And I'm going to put one out there, look. Because the tide's flying up here now, and there's a big obstruction down there and down here. And the fish like to work around those obstructions. And that's where your bread, when you throw in your ground bait in, that's where the bread tends to gather is around these structures, which the mullet come in and patrol. So there's another tip. That's tip number three, Keith. Right, well, the tide is finally starting to push. See the bread down there moving up the system. So it's, um, it's pretty rubbish down here until the tide starts running. So hopefully we'll start getting bites. Come on, the mullet. I thought I did it just now. Yeah, as a bite, mate. Yeah. Come on. So Keith just had the first bite there. Here we go, very slow here, but uh, had a little sleeper rod out there. Let's come back. Classic mullet bite. Sneaky. Here we are. My little secret spot. Not secret anymore, is it? Don't mention it. Hello, hello spot. Yeah, so here we are guys. Um, I'm back down on the plim. I'm down at Saltram. And yeah, I started this video uh, about a week ago here. All great expectations and everything. Nothing happened. I went up to around the corner and I saw a big group of mullet and that really turned me on. Uh, but the weather's just been so rubbish lately, you know, so, so yes. Top tips for you guys. So I'm putting this like little video together, you know, mullet fishing secrets you should know. And it's a lovely little thumbnail as well I've, I've created there for you. So um, yeah, I'm just going to go through some tips, you know, stuff that's going to help you catch some more mullet. And yes, I'm just, the tide is flooding now, but the big problem is this fresh water. It's all fresh, it's all, you can see the river probably behind me here. And this is 95% fresh, it's still coming down. It's coming up now, it's coming, it's pushing up the sides. You know, it's coming, it, the tide is coming, it's massive, there's low pressure. And another thing, I didn't, it's like a 5.7 today, 5.7 metre, but because there's low pressure on it, that means it's a bigger tide because the tide can come up further. So a 5.7 is now a 5.9. And on the flip side, on the high pressure, pushes the tides down, so you get lower tides. So a 5.7 would be like a 5.4 or a 5.5. So I don't know if you knew that, all about the barometric pressures. So yes, yeah, so I'm down here at the, right at the sort of bottom of Saltram here, before it drops down to the embankment. And I'm just gonna get some bread in now and you know see what's what. I'm just here for an experiment, uh, but I can certainly give you some great tips, you know? So yes, here we are, we are here. And yes, it's not great weather, southwest winds, it's a bit windy. But yeah, I've got my trusty mullet gear and a fixed pat and a double hook. 
and I've explained about the double hook. It's not a treble hook, it's a double. And I did exp I've explained that already earlier on in the video, why it's, why it's a good option rather than a treble. So yeah, so I'm gonna get some bread in now, guys, and hopefully we're gonna get some action because um, yeah, I had a, a cracking fish up at uh, Sulcombe, you know, four pounds, 12, just under five. absolute mental fight you know it's had some really good comments and thanks very much for that uh, but yes we are here and I haven't seen any fish moving or anything like that so I'm just gonna bide my time just sit here for a few hours and just watch what happens because very often I'll go mullet fishing and I won't even fish I'll just be watching just scouting around just getting in tune with the fish seeing where they are seeing where they're feeding so yeah here we go Right, so you'll notice that I'm dressed a little bit differently today. I've got, obviously, this hat and I've got the glasses. So I've got my, I've got my special fishing glasses on. They're Polaroids, you can see down into the water. It cuts the glare off the water. But the main thing is, you don't see any, all right, I've got a bit of green on my arm here, but don't go out mullet fishing with any bright clothing all right so no bright hats um, even glasses you know mullet have got very good eyesight and if they see bright clothes or anything against against the background in the bushes or in the trees or anything like that if, if you can see the mullet then they can see you and if you're dressed nice and dull like me you know gray trousers black boots black hoodie and a nice I've got a camo hat okay and the gla glasses are dark so that's another very important tip for you is your clothing what you wear when you go mullet fishing so don't so don't be like me when i'm you know got all my green gear on all glowing and all that because it just doesn't work so yeah think camo guys camo or think nice nice clothing that's going to match into the surroundings right so another tip i can give you guys and girls is is your bait the bread all right so a mullet session, how much bread do you need? Well, it depends how long you're going for. If you're going for the day, you need a lots of bread, five or six loaves. But if you're going for like two or three hours, I've got three loaves, one, two, three there, three loaves, right? You don't have to put loaves and loaves and loaves down on the spot to get the mullet feeding, okay? You can actually overfeed them. I know, I know a few mullet anglers that don't even ground bait. So they'll just put out their rig with a washing line pinched on the line and that's it and they do very well without any ground bait whatsoever but i like to go little and often so i'll put a bed down there first you know I'll, so i'll make a where i'm fishing i'll just put a nice little bit around it just to stop those mullet when they come in they'll go oh there's some bread there and they'll stop and they'll have a have a little munch and they'll move on so yeah i just don't put too much bread in you can actually overkill all right so little and often just keep it going in and if you've got a mix you can make a nice cloud you know a loose mix and just throw it have a spoon and just throw it in and it just creates a cloud and it's really nice so yes not too much ground bait bit of a log there gotta get me gear in quick got my gear out just in time there watch out for that tree yeah so the tide's just starting to push now against this uh really big flow that's coming down the other way so that's this is good news the tide is winning and another really easy tip have your net ready have it down there ready so you you know it's there ready to use and you don't have to look for it like i did the other day so i was fishing that on the rocks the other day for that big mullet and just the net was behind the camera, so I had to make a, a dash for it. Wow. Well, I haven't got my net, it's up there behind the camera. I got away with it, but it's not ideal. So yeah, try and be prepared I'm not always prepared I think we're all guilty of that but be as ready as you can right well 
Here we are. So float fishing can be a really good method as well. So I've got a float there. It's a heavy float for, for course fishing. It obviously takes a lot of big shot. And I've just got a little size eight mixer hook on the end. And this is different from when you bait up um, on the bottom for like a pasty. This is, uh, this is the skirt method. Okay, so a small bit of bread. And I always try and get the hook in the middle of the bread and then just so I can just feel my finger at the back. Just feel my finger here, I can feel the point. So you can just feel it. And then all you do at the back is just literally crimp at the back, twiddle it around. So you've got that. And then you just seal, seal up the flappages, close the flaps. And then what you've got there is an open-ended bait that isn't gonna pop up like a pasty because obviously you're under a float here and you want it down, facing downwards. So I found that is the best way to present a float bait, the skirt. Let's get it out there. I just want to see if I get any bites. Yeah, so I've got a float just out, just out of there in the middle now and it's not going up and it's not going down. So it's sort of like neutral. The tide's not winning or anything at the moment. It'll probably change in a minute. So it's only about 20, 15, 20 foot out. So I like to take a crust from the bread. So the bit you don't usually use, the nice crust at the end. And I really smash that up really fine. And I throw that as close to my float as I can. And what that does is it creates a nice cloud, which, which obviously draws the mullet instantly onto your hook bait, which is the only big thing there really worth eating if you've really done a good job with your bait. So yeah, the tide's just starting to push up again now, so my float's moving that way. See the float, you can just see the bread there just disappearing. So that's lovely, that's going along with that, trotting along with that float. 